Hello again, it's Dr. Jordan Taylor, Undergraduate Exercise Science Program Director and Associate Teaching Professor at the University of Kansas. And welcome to another edition of Fitness Facts. Blood is responsible for the transport of oxygen, nutrients, and many other molecules crucial for sustaining life. But what if I told you that restricting blood flow in muscles for short durations during exercise can stimulate gains in muscle strength and size? Blood flow restriction training, also known as BFR training and blood flow occlusion training, has become popular in recent years. So what is this form of training and why are athletes, fitness, fitness enthusiasts, and patients who are rehabilitating from injuries utilizing this training modality? I'm going to discuss blood flow restriction training in a three-part video series. In today's video, I will provide a detailed overview of this novel training technique. In part two, which will be the next video release, I will discuss how to properly design a single BFR training workout. In part three of this video series, a BFR training session will actually be demonstrated. A 2019 paper published in Frontiers in Physiology by Patterson and colleagues defined blood flow restriction training as a training method partially restricting arterial inflow and fully restricting venous outflow of blood in working musculature during exercise. The authors further stated that performing exercise with reduced blood flow achieved by restriction of the vasculature proximal to the muscle dates back to Dr. Yoshiaki Sato in Japan where it was known as katsu training, meaning training with added pressure. Katsu training is now performed all over the world and is more commonly referred to as BFR training. The technique for conducting BFR training involves inflating a device such as a pressure cuff or wrapping a band around the top portion of a limb to restrict blood flow into and out of a muscle group. Remember that arteries carry blood to muscles and veins carry blood away from them back toward the heart. It's also important to realize that arteries are located much deeper in tissues such as muscle than are the veins. Since veins are more superficial, it is easy to occlude them with a moderate amount of pressure by applying cuffs, bands, or wraps around limbs. Wrapping restriction bands or inflating cuffs as tight as possible is not advised because extreme pressure may completely restrict the inflow of blood through deeper arteries into the muscle that is located below the band. When BFR training is performed properly, some blood is able to enter the muscle via the arteries. However, the more superficial veins are restricted to the point that blood is prevented from leaving the working muscle during exercise. Thus, blood is trapped in the muscle during exercise while the band or cuff is on the limb. In laboratory and clinical settings, the pressure at which arterial blood flow is totally occluded is often measured prior to performing BFR training. 40 to 80% of total arterial occlusion pressure is then applied to the limb to safely restrict blood flow during the exercise session, which can be low intensity cardiovascular or resistance training exercise performed for a short duration of no more than 15 minutes. It's important to know that the width of bands and cuffs plays a role in the pressure applied to a limb. Narrow bands or cuffs will require a greater amount of pressure to be effective than wider bands or cuffs. Many types of inflatable cuffs and restriction bands are available for purchase at a variety of prices. High-tech inflatable cuffs may cost anywhere from several hundred dollars to more than $1,000. For example, Smart Cuffs by Smart Tools come with an automated pump. The device automatically inflates, measures the total arterial occlusion pressure, and then the device can be programmed to inflate to a lower predetermined percentage of the total arterial occlusion pressure within the recommended 40 to 80% range during the exercise training bout. Smart cuffs are expensive and typically used by healthcare professionals, so it may be more practical for you to purchase knee wraps or cheaper BFR restriction bands that can be purchased online for as little as $10 to $20. When you are unable to directly measure occlusion pressure, such as when using cheaper wraps or BFR bands, you may wonder how tight to wrap them around your arms and legs prior to exercise. You can determine how tight to wrap these bands around your limbs by using a subjective perceived pressure scale that ranges from zero to 10, with zero representing no pressure, seven representing moderate pressure with no pain, and 10 representing intense pressure with pain. In a 2012 article published in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research, Dr. Jacob Wilson and colleagues used ultrasonography on study participants to determine that wrapping limbs with a perceived pressure of 7 out of 10 consistently occluded veins but not arteries. This is the desired effect. 
So when performing BFR training with bands, wrap your limbs with a moderate pressure equating to 7 out of 10 on the perceived pressure scale. Muscles get bigger and stronger through neural, mechanical, hormonal, and metabolic mechanisms as a result of consistently performing resistance training. It is generally accepted that to induce significant gains in muscle mass and strength, resistance exercise requires moderate to heavy load training using loads equivalent to at least 70% of an individual's one repetition maximum. However, mounting evidence now supports the use of blood flow restriction combined with light load resistance exercise that is between 20 to 50% of a person's one repetition maximum to enhance muscle mass and strength. Muscle strength gains resulting from light load resistance training performed with BFR are lower than compared to heavy load resistance training without BFR. However, light load BFR resistance training is more effective than light load resistance exercise that is performed without BFR. So light load BFR resistance training should be used when heavy load resistance training is not advisable, such as during a deload week of training, during post-operative rehabilitation periods or cardiac rehabilitation, and for those individuals with injuries or inflammatory diseases. Light load BFR resistance training is also beneficial for building strength in frail elderly. When considering muscle mass growth, both light load BFR resistance training and heavy load resistance training seem equally effective. Disuse atrophy is a frequent complication in clinical populations making light load BFR resistance training a potential alternative to heavy load resistance training specifically for muscle mass loss. Muscle hypertrophy can be observed in as little as three weeks when light load BFR resistance training is conducted two to three times per week. Athletes and bodybuilders can also perform light load BFR resistance training two to three times per week immediately after a heavy load resistance training session to potentially further enhance muscle mass and strength. Overall, light load BFR training is not a replacement for heavy load resistance training, but it is a supplement to it. It has been speculated that metabolic stress is the driving force behind light load BFR induced gains in muscle strength and mass. Slight, slightly restricting blood flow into a muscle while also totally occluding blood from leaving the muscle creates a significant muscle pump as well as a result of cellular swelling. The combination of cellular swelling and reduced oxygen levels may switch on anabolic intracellular signaling pathways such as mTOR, stimulating muscle protein synthesis and growth. Significant metabolite buildup has been noted during light load BFR training, indicating an association between metabolic stress and gains in muscle strength and size. Hydrogen ions and lactate are metabolites that increase significantly in blood flow restricted muscles. Elevated levels of these metabolites stimulate an increased release of growth hormone from the anterior pituitary gland. Growth hormone may then stimulate IGF-1 release. IGF-1 is a hormone that is known to increase muscle protein synthesis and growth of cells by activating the mTOR intracellular signaling pathway. In addition, BFR resistance training has been shown to reduce myostatin concentrations. Myostatin is an inhibitor of muscle growth and is thought to limit one's potential to gain muscle. BFR resistance training may increase satellite cell proliferation and the recruitment of type 2 fast twitch muscle fibers when each set is performed to fatigue or near fatigue. There have been scientific findings demonstrating muscle growth within non-blood flow restricted muscles such as the glutes, chest, back, and shoulders as a result of long-term BFR resistance training programs. So is BFR training safe? Yes it is when performed correctly. Do not occlude blood flow and muscles for more than 15 consecutive minutes during a resistance training workout. And remember to perform resistance exercises with light loads between 20 to 50% of your one repetition maximum. BFR training can also be used for short periods during low intensity cardiovascular exercise such as walking or low intensity cycling. BFR training has been used after ACL reconstruction, for knee pain, after periods of immobilization, and in the geriatric population. Serious adverse events in people who don't have contraindications to BFR training have not yet been reported. Common side effects with BFR training are often short-lived and include things like numbness, discomfort, petechial hemorrhage, skin abrasions, bruising, and delayed onset muscle soreness. These are usually not concerning. However, caution should be used by people with cardiac conditions or clotting concerns. Fortunately, a 2019 review paper by Colin Bond and colleagues published in the Journal of Orthopedic and Sports Physical Therapy 
showed that the risk of blood clots is extremely low with this training technique. BFR training is contraindicated in people with hyper, hypertension, diabetes, history of stroke or deep vein thrombosis, cardiac disease, active infections, pregnancy, clotting disorders, or other vascular insufficiencies like varicose veins. Speak to your physician before beginning a BFR training program. I hope you enjoyed this fitness facts video on BFR training and remember to watch the other videos I will release on this topic. Thanks for watching.